Hey everyone, Harris O'Malley from DrNerdLove.com. How often has this happened to you? You've met someone, you had some serious chemistry, and you went on a date that, as far as you were concerned, went amazingly well. You even got some positive feedback, like, hey, I had a great time, or I really enjoyed talking to you, or thank you for such a lovely evening. Maybe you even got a good night kiss, but there's no second date. Or maybe you've had dates that didn't go as well, but you don't know what it is that you're doing wrong. Or maybe you've just been out of the game for a while and you're not entirely sure what to do for a first date. These are all issues guys run into all the time when it comes to dating. They're good at getting a first date, but they're having a hard time getting a second. And the frustrating thing is that it's not that everything's going wrong or they're making mistakes. It's just that no matter what they seem to do, they're left with a series of first dates to nowhere and nothing to show for it. And a lot of times, the problem is, well, the date. To be perfectly blunt, a lot of popular ideas for first dates are... Bad. It's not that the dates have anything inherently wrong with them. In fact, a lot of them are perfectly good dates. It's just that a lot of them make for lousy first dates. And that's because people tend to get the wrong idea about what a first date is for. To a lot of folks, a first date is when you're supposed to get to know someone. You want to sit down, really have a chance to talk with them, see if there's some chemistry there. So... Basically treating it like a job interview, except there might be sex afterwards. Great potential job interview. Lousy first date. A lot of folks tend to fall back on the incredibly traditional first date ideas. Getting together for coffee, maybe a drink, or the ever-classic dinner and a movie. Now, in and of itself, these are not bad dates. They're just not good ones. Except for dinner and a movie, that's a horrible date idea. You're paying money so that you don't talk to each other for a couple of hours, and honestly, if you're going to do this, you should at least be going to the movie first so you have something to talk about over dinner. The problem is that, for the most part, these are just pleasant. And pleasant is, frankly, boring. They're vaguely enjoyable, but not terribly exciting or all that memorable unless something truly awful happened. A lot of these date ideas can be a fun part of a date, but as a date in and of themselves, they're often the social equivalent of a movie that you enjoyed, but you'll completely forget that you saw by next week. You don't feel like you've wasted your time, but you also don't feel terribly motivated to see it again. And that motivation is what you want from a first date. You want to give your date a reason to want to see you again. When your dates are just nice, you're running on borrowed time. Nice means that while you may get a second date, you're probably not getting a third, and honestly probably not getting a second, because your date is just not gonna feel that spark. And honestly, life is too short for Eh. This is part of why a lot of first dates, especially the coffee date, tend not to lead to second dates. They're bland, they're not unpleasant, and probably perfectly acceptable, but acceptable isn't a feeling that leads to wanting to see someone again. Now, some of this comes from the way that people tend to behave on dates. They want to be on their best behavior and make a good first impression with their date and avoid any major obvious mistake. You know, avoid sticking their foot in their mouth. While this is not a bad thing per se, what it means in practice is issues like the fact that the conversation never rises above the level of the same basic getting to know you interview questions that everybody asks on dates. What do you do? Where did you go to school? Have you lived here? long. Now, we have an understandable desire to want to avoid topics that might be considered too controversial or too potentially explosive, so we stick to broad and unobjectionable topics. But as a result, we end up on dates that feel less like two people who are interested in each other and more like an interview or a, an audition for a date sometime in the future. But the truth is, we want to talk about those deeper, more meaningful, potentially controversial topics. We all like talking about things that we have strong opinions on. When we talk about things that we have a lot of importance to us, we feel like we've really had a chance to get to know someone. And most of the time, the topics that we want to talk about are the ones we're supposed to shy away from. Now, obviously, you don't want to start a date with something like, So, what are your thoughts on abortion? But 
Topics like politics or money or religion or even sex can be more illuminating and more fun to talk about than where did you grow up or what movies have you seen recently. Now, just as importantly, you want to find the topics that let you two really get to know each other, really get into who someone is as a person. And you can start with favorite vacations or treasured memories or experiences, life goals, or even sharing personal stories or secrets instead of going for topics that are a little more acceptable but uh, banal. This doesn't mean that you want to suddenly vomit your feelings all over your date, but being willing to lead the way and open up and be real with them is a way of building a strong and importantly more enjoyable connection very quickly. And that enjoyable part is important. A lot of people make the mistake in that they don't know what a good first date is. Is. A good first date doesn't mean that you had a sloppy makeout session at the back of the bar, and it doesn't mean that the two of you spent the entire night talking about the meaning of life and the universe and everything. A good first date is one where you have accomplished the main goal of any first date. And that goal isn't just getting to know someone or, for that matter, getting some action. It's having a great time so that the other person is excited to see you again. And one of the things that will determine whether your date wants to see you again is how much she's actually enjoyed herself when she's with you. This is what's known as the reward theory of attraction. We instinctively prioritize relationships with people who make us feel good. Our brains want that dopamine hit that comes when we're enjoying ourselves. And since we associate the good feelings with the person rather than the activity, that's causing them, we want to spend more time with that person. This is why you want to plan your dates around the potential for fun. Now, the good thing is there are many ways of planning dates like this. It's fairly simple to plan dates to be fun around your personality and your budget. For example, part of why meeting for coffee is popular is because it's easy and low investment. You're probably only going to meet up for an hour or so, and if things don't go well, you're really just out the cost of a cup of coffee. But as far as first dates go, it's not that interesting. However, if you make even a slight twist to the formula, you can turn even the most tired cliche into something more unique and entertaining. A coffee date, sure, is a little played out, but if you plan to meet up for coffee and play some board games or a game like Exploding Kitten or Super Fight, now you've got a far more memorable and more enjoyable first date. One of the easiest ways to make dates more fun is to plan dates that are unique or unusual. Most people have done the same dates over and over and over. This doesn't necessarily mean that those dates can't be entertaining, but they can be a little unimaginative. Everybody's done dinner and drinks, for example, but not as many people have gone to a sushi making class or have gone swing dancing, or they haven't gone to race go-karts or do indoor skydiving. They haven't had an impromptu ski ball tournament or gone on an urban art hike. You can take a walk while hunting for Pokemon. You can visit a street fair. The possibilities are fun actually endless, and it takes very little to add a new or intriguing twist to even the most cliché first date idea. This is a time when knowing what's going on in your area is hugely helpful. Your local alt-weekly newspaper or online events calendar can help keep you tuned in to what's happening in your area, and that will provide you with a ton of potential date ideas. But while you're thinking about date ideas, keep in mind that active first dates tend to be sedentary ones. Anything that gets your heart rate up and excites your central nervous system also excites the rest of you. This is a quirk of human psychology. We are actually really bad at understanding why we feel the way that we do. We feel the physical sensations of a particular emotion and then decide why we're feeling it afterwards based on the context. So when our hearts are pounding and our mouths are dry, we might be scared or we might be aroused. It depends on whether you're next to a tiger or a beautiful woman. So the thrill that comes with racing go-karts or going to a haunted house or your pounding heart from going dancing translates to feelings of sexual or romantic interest. And once again, we associate those feelings with the person we're with rather than the activity that caused that elevated heart rate. Going to a climbing wall may have gotten you all worked up, but your date is going to associate those feelings with you 
not with rock climbing. Don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean that your first date needs to be some crazy act of adventure. Even a, a nice walk can help keep things active and take advantage of this. In fact, planning a date that has you walking to a number of different places can work out in your favor. Not only does the walk help keep things active, but going to multiple venues on the same date makes it feel like the two of you have known each other for longer than you actually have. It's called the doorway effect. Our brains compartmentalize our memories based around our environment, and when we travel to a new environment with a distinct transition or boundary, such as, say, a doorway, it creates a new memory. This has the effect of helping build this sense of having known each other longer, and that encourages a stronger sense of closeness and a connection. And that sense of closeness and that feeling that you two have known each other for forever makes it easier to relax, it makes it easier to open up, and to get real with each other. So, if you say, go to see a band play, and then you go to a different bar for a drink, then go to a third place for dinner, and then, you know, go for a stroll afterwards, you and your date will feel like you've spent far more time together than you actually have. And that helps create that sense of, I've only just met you, but I feel like I've known you all my life. But, if you want the one single most important thing when it comes to a successful first date, here's the thing you need to keep in mind. If you are going to go on a date with someone, you need to act like you're on a date with them. You wouldn't think this is something that needed to be said, but one of the mistakes I see guys make all the time on first dates is that they play it a little too safe. A little too cool. A little too polite. So much so that they give the impression they don't actually like the person they're on a date with. Now, I get the impulse to want to play it cool and not come off as pushy or needy, but the whole point of being on a date is that you presumably like each other and you want to see if there's enough interest to pursue a romantic or sexual relationship. And if you aren't actually flirting or otherwise showing real interest in your date, then what you're telling them is that you're really only into them as a potential friend. And that means you can't really be surprised when they're not up for a second date with you. This doesn't mean that you need to be Captain Touchy or a drooling, leering, obnoxious asshole. That's a different but just as effective way of not getting a second date. But you do need to make it clear that you're into them as more than an activity buddy. Little things like taking their arm as you walk or putting a gentle hand on the small of their back as you move around, especially when paired with flirting and with compliments, all help build that spark and make it clear to them that you're on this date with them for a reason. Just remember, these are guidelines, not hard and fast rules. Your dates don't need to meet every single criteria on this list in order to be good. But the more that you understand what makes for a great first date, the more likely it is that you'll have an amazing second, and then a third. Hey, thanks for checking out my latest video. So, you heard what I had to say, and now I want to hear from you. What are some of the best dates that you have been on? Whether they are ones that you planned, or ones that someone invited you on? I want to hear all about it, and so do the other people watching this, so be sure to share your story in the comments. I can't wait to read it. And hey, if you have a short dating question or a topic you'd like to hear more about on here, let me know. You can share that in the comments as well, or hit me up and send that to me at doc at drnerdlove.com with for YouTube in the subject. Meanwhile, if you want to get better at getting numbers and turning those numbers into dates, then check out my newest book, I Got Her Number, Now What? This is your all purpose guide to texting for success, and it is going to turn your phone and texting into a dating superpower. Links to buy it are in the show notes, so go check it out, and if you do check it out, then do me a huge favor, and be sure to rate and review it on Amazon and Goodreads. It is a huge help. Now, if you're digging the series and you know what to do, hit that thumbs up, let me know, be sure to share it around with all your friends. If you are really enjoying these videos, if you are getting a lot out of it and you're finding that it's really helping and you want to support the channel, then consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Even one dollar is a huge help, and as I'm always saying, I can't do this without the support of my patrons, so thank you all so very much 
your support means everything to me. Meanwhile, follow me on Twitter at, at @drnerdlove. Keep up with the latest from me by joining the Facebook page at facebook.com/drnerdlove. And as always, hit that logo to subscribe. Check out my other videos and I will be back with you next time with more about love, sex, and dating. Later.